morning. It's another great Fleet Friday. Uh, a couple... Eh, let me reorganize this for a second. Let's move this to the top for a moment, and then I'll maybe move things around. Uh, exciting week at as the HQ. We have a big virtual conference coming up next uh, Wednesday and Thursday, uh, where we will be uh, talking about launch and recovery. And we are going to look at a little recovery today, actually. Uh, so this is really about uh, drones. And for the Navy, drones means aerial, it means surface, and it means undersea. So there's uh, different days have different programming, focusing on those different environments. But in the end, the big idea is that uh, we are projecting a lot of power and a lot of research abilities uh, through these uh, unmanned drones. And so we will look at a little bit of that today, actually. Uh, the only other thing I wanted to mention is at 1 p.m. in four hours from now, 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific, we will be talking about a mysterious ship sinking and how engineers worked like detectives and really investigated all the evidence, what that was at hand, and uh, solved this mystery. And it was about 10 years ago. It was a South Korean ship named the Cheon. And it was sunk in waters, and people had a lot of theories at the beginning. Uh, but thanks to some great engineers and some good um, critical thinking, uh, we, we know what happened now. And so during that uh, hour at 1 o'clock, what I'll do is give a little bit of an overview of the topic. So that way we have good ways to think about these things and think about uh, some of the terms that will be used. If any of if there'll be the ability for you to ask questions both at the beginning where we can talk about it but then what I'll do is is play Rear Admiral Eccles uh, personal presentation that he gave um, to ASNI but also you know as formal reports uh, to Navy personnel both overseas and at home uh, and we can we can chat those questions as he's presenting that chat those questions and answers as he presents that information uh, to us uh, so I think that's all the housekeeping. I'm going to move Chrome back down so that we can focus on oh, me. Got to focus on me and Fleet. All right, so let's get into this. Uh, let's take a peek. So we did an, a different kind of session for July 3rd. Uh, it was a federal holiday. So our interns, we know that you were hopefully off and having a great long weekend, discovering the joys of a four-day work week uh, already. Um, and so what we did, and actually I'll, can, I can do this through quick play. Uh, we looked at all the things that we can put on the um, combat practice vehicle. And I'm going to start upgrading my mouse situation to uh, this because as we saw, the ability to shoot really became, oh, let me take a sip of this before I get into it too much, but the ability to shoot and steer really was important, right? We needed to be able to uh, have good dexterity to manage our, our three weapon ship. So we can click on these things. We can see we got the machine gun, sniper gun, machine gun. And then we got extra ammo here, lots of sniper ammo. And you can see when I click this, it makes him a little bit more obvious. The crew member allows us uh, the ability to drive and shoot at the same time. And uh, in our socially distant times, if you have a sibling or a friend that you are in lockdown with or uh, at having good communication, safe communications with, you could share it you know you could share the steering and the shooting and you could work together and really uh, set some really strong scores here uh, let's take this boat out and do a little review before we get into our autonomous drone situation I'm gonna hit escape because it says press escape and actually Let's do a little data real quick. Let's see how fast this ship is. We didn't do any testing uh, last week. 
So I'm just hitting W right away. And if you like the up arrow, you can use the up arrow. Because the waves are so much uh, closer to the mass of my ship, uh, I'm having some issues. But uh, I think things are going well. Let's hit speed two times. Ooh. And so that way we can get twice the data in the same amount of time. All right, that was a good set. All right, so uh, we've seen this over the last few weeks, right? That when my ships get closer to the 1 million, 2 million pound range, I'm going from like 100 seconds to like 2 minutes, 20, 2 minutes, 30 seconds. But this is a light ship. You might have noticed it's about 52,400 kilograms, so about 100,000 pounds uh, when we're coming out of dry dock. 70 seconds, super fast. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into a little combat practice. We're going to practice. So the difference, again, with practice is they don't move. And there's no aerial drone for us to worry about. Uh, so for the launch and recovery conference next week, we're not talking about these evil practice drones that need to be shot down out of the water. So what I am doing is aiming with this moving around. And then firing with this. But I need to steer also. So now I'm hitting D and coming in. And I got a nice gun on the bow. So I'm able to shoot as I drive right at something. And to get into this screen. Nice. Look how good I am. Look how good I am. Uh, I hit space. And I'm going to hit space again. Uh, no, I'm gonna, I got a good shot with this. We'll hit space out for the next drone. And you can't quite see my ammo, but it was in the thousands. There we go. And that space, space. So space is how you change what you're, how you're looking. And look, you can even see my little, woo, my machine gun, my, was, is tilt, turned to the left, reflecting how it's shooting at last. But let's use this guy, oops. One. Oh, you should. There. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Down. Look. Oh, I need to unclick speed 2x. That's why things were seeming like chaos. Cool. All right. So now less chaos. Oops. One, two, three. There we go. Turning left. Look at this. Getting sniper action on the true sniper action. The other ones were kind of in between whether I needed to use the machine gun or the sniper. Probably figured out I do like the sniper. 146 seconds, 507 points of damage delivered to drones. This boat is good. All right, but let's let's bring it back to reality. Uh, I'm not going to go to mission list. I'm going to go to eh, we'll go to logbook. I want to show one thing. Uh, so in missions and achievements, heavy, oops, we are combat operations. Uncheck. We had some high scores up here, but we've had a lot of good progress. Uh, I'll give some shout outs on the webpage this afternoon uh, to highlight some of the great scores that I've been seeing coming in over the last 10 days. Uh, you all have been doing really strong work in this game. So keep on doing working as hard as you can to design the best ship ever all right so we got a couple of bbe's best ships ever here best boats ever uh, but let's bring it back to headquarters all right so i'm going to bring it into mission headquarters for combat operations uh Nominally this week we're going to do the AUV retrieval and if you want to really work hard on it that's where we're going to focus most of our time on today but I want to run through this mission one last time because we are $61,000 over budget let's check our engine let's bring it down from turbo need to see full screen to get that delete button to medium speed such a disappointing downgrade but we're under budget and we still got our three guns so 
let's let's take it out for a spin because we changed the engines even though I located it in the same spot in that square at the top um, we will we need to do the stability test also this is your first time looking at this game there's a plus button in the upper corner that's why I used to add the engine the button below it is the ship button it shows everything that's on the ship there are three categories of things there's structures there's propulsion and then there's advanced guess what advanced means cool so definitely check out advanced uh, now we got the medium speed engine but we're gonna take it out for a little sunny combat practice now I'm gonna start with space right away oops cuz I oops I want to shoot this one out of the ground out of the sky before using this time before I even get into the high density of drone situation all right so we can see I've got two over here and one here let's see I'm gonna go a little full screen I'm sorry if it affects the stream a bit but I need to see how much ammo I got 46 shots sniper shots I was getting cocky with the first two. These waves move me a bit. All right, so we got one down. Still got a bunch of ammunition for the... We got 37 for the sniper. Oop. Nope. Nope. Steering away. I got to see what's going on with this boat. All right. Taking a hard left. Let's try to get this one out before it goes behind that island. Ooh, it's going to be a little close. Moment of truth. Nope. There we go. Multiple moments of truth. Such a truthful shot. All right. Now we've got the aerial drone. We took out two out in the water. Now we got to see. We got a few back in here. Maybe I should have went in the other way, but we'll come in this way. You can see if you've been watching the knots, the, my speed down here, 34. We're not doing too bad. We may not have lost too much with uh, downgrading the engine but we needed that hundred thousand dollars that we got back to make uh, any ship really viable if you watched over the break uh, we found that we could afford one weapon and no extra ammo with that uh, turbocharged diesel so it's just not practical it seems like however if you find the perfect boat that involves turbocharged diesel engine, shoot us an email. Send us some some uh, some pictures and some uh, some showing off, and a good little bit of your engineering design process. Let's use the old machine gun on the bow here. Take this one out. Uh, you can always email us at fleet at navalengineers.org, and we can help you with you know simple things like just getting the account set up uh, but also we love to talk about the engineering that you are doing to make this successful alright so now I think I don't have radar maybe we should have put radar on here I think I could have afforded it but I think we just had this one left I'm gonna hit space and take a peek around I don't see any other drones so we got to go head them off at the pass. The, the naval cowboy solution to drones hiding behind islands. I mean, there's such sneaky little things. All right, unclick. All right, we're just going to keep driving right at you. Ooh, overturned. Now I'm hitting D hard. So this is... Driving from the very bow of the boat is a interesting 
angle and choice probably not the best but that's a pretty good run you know I'd, the end was not uh, very efficient but score is okay damage is high and uh, we, you know 3 minutes 19 seconds I'm not going to be too upset with that that's, that's decent uh, so let me just go through one last time let's bring it back into missions and uh, bring it back to mission here so I'm hitting you can see I can look around by holding down the right key and moving things around I hit space and then I'm looking through a weapon and I can aim this way too and then when I left click that's when it actually fires and for I can fire this weapon anytime I want if we use the rocket launchers you can only fire them when you get when you go to green okay and you can see that the energy above the these dastardly drones decreases as I get amazing sniper shots on them which may not be quite amazing we get the successful explosion uh, because I have the crew member in here I can drive and shoot and you can see you can watch all my driving information here you can even see the steering wheel turn that's the crew steering you know but what I need to do as an engineer is give myself this all this information while looking out for or forward or backwards if you're driving fast backwards and you're looking out of a stern weapon god bless that will work but what I need to do is use either this weapon going forward you know between these two lines I know that I'm going forward uh, and then that's what makes it uh, me be able to drive safely while shooting a weapon one last thing I'm not going to do it but if you accidentally shoot your own ship missions over okay so I just hit the escape button the button in the upper left corner and it brings up a few options we can exit the mission which we're going to do we can restart it so if you're really going for high scores and you know that something just broke the wrong way in the beginning restart and just it'll put you right at the beginning of the mission I'll click that now uh, so it just starts us right at the beginning new score new time return to game if you just ask if you just need to pause need to go do something for someone else and come back to your game you can always hit escape and then hit return to game but we are going to exit this mission and we're going to exit go back to mission headquarters actually all right so now we are so we you know launch and recovery kind of sounds like supply and logistics but it's actually closest to this heavy seas operations uh, so let's we're coming into the dry dock and we're going to be told right away yeah new ship uh, but we get 2.1 million dollars and let's add we're going to go with the standard cutter haul for this we're, we don't we're not going to use the cargo haul today but you can see oh well all right so the cutter haul has a place maybe we will all right so I already lied to myself we're gonna not use this ship that can weigh up to or you know within range it's supposed to weigh about 450,000 kilograms we're gonna use one section of cargo haul and that's good and now we are going to, so if you want to make it longer you could make it sh longer or shorter so what I just did was I clicked on it and it brought this up and then I can add as many units of cargo if you've seen us do this over the last couple of weeks the longer it is the heavier it is and the slower it is so I'm not going to rerun through that engineering process if that's interesting to you check out the discussion page the discussion page has all the old live streams and you'll see that there's some live streams where we really dug into that uh, but now we need a bow and we will use old bulbous bow number two helps us generate good waves and then we have only have one stern and now we can see that this boat weighs 770,000 kilograms uh, so you know 
getting a, above 1.5 million pounds, but we actually have a lot of ways to go to our target displacement. Um, yeah, I guess let's finish building the boat and then we'll go back and look at the mission uh, objectives a little bit more. So we're going to use the checklist as a checklist. So uh, let us add the propeller. Uh, eh, let's see how much money we have. We'll go good first. We'll go great. High efficiency. We'll go engine. Give me the good engine. And I'm going to put it in the center here. You can see that this is right where that piece of cargo is. This is the stern. This is the bow. So right when it's all green, this is as close to the center as I can get and be safe. The engine is right here. All right. So now we're going to add a rudder, which is actually a structure. And let's go low drag. We've had good luck with low drag. Makes it fast but hard to turn. Depends on us steering well. Uh, so we have different masses. Uh, let's go for the let's go for the heavier one. We haven't really used this one in a while. Uh, so now we're up to nine hundred thousand kilograms. Uh, let us add in these remaining equipment pieces. These are the these are some of the things that we will need for us to retrieve some AUVs. So. A container full of AUV retrieval equipment. With this on board, the crew will be able to retrieve AUVs from the ocean. What is an AUV? It's an autonomous underwater vehicle. So this is our search and recovery of autonomous underwater vehicles. Let's. I hit R to rotate it so I can put it right up against the deck here and keep the weight. Actually, let's move this stuff. I'm going to move this a little bit forward and I'll move this a little bit forward because I want it over the the cargo the piece in the exact center does that seem better that it's not quite over it's not centered centered but it looks it looks better it looks like the weight's being well distributed in the center uh, comms we need some comms and we need a rescue boat so comms are under uh, advanced let's grab let's grab this cheaper the smallest of the the comms and so you can see what this did is it added comms to my superstructure so now I've got pretty advanced radar up here and now we can bring the rescue boat in and we got all the money in the world let's go big with the rescue boat so now let's look at what we got we got, and so I'm just right clicking again to change the mouse to look around the ship. So uh, we've got a good communication setup, the best rescue boat, the best engine. We can check that out here. Under propulsion, we got engine, awesome. Propeller, awesome. Structure of rudder, equally awesome. Low drag. So we're able to go fast. We're going to see if that's the right solution for this mission. The last thing that we need to do is we still got a red X. So displacement means weight. Our ship needs to sit lower in the ocean so that waves don't push it too much uh, left and right. So we are going to add something. And we are going to add a ballast tank. And so the cheapest thing on the ocean is ocean. So we are going to fill up ocean into these tanks. And you can see my displacement increasing. We had about 100,000 kilograms to go. And we still need to keep increasing the weight a bit. And so the, I'm going to go as light as possible. And oop, not quite there. Uh, almost. I think that's good. So the one thing I avoided doing is clicking done. It's such an enticing button. If you click done and you need to fill up the tanks again, you can come back into the ship button. The ship button shows you everything that's on the ship. Uh, we got to go left. It thinks we want to do the, but we're just going left to this. Clicking on the ballast tanks we did use, we'll see all the water that's in there. And then we click the water button. It brings us right back to where we were. So if you click done and you need to come back and actually get your displacement, or if you add or subtract something, you want to change it. 
you just go to the ship button and click the, wa uh, the water button down below. For my more advanced naval engineers, we can talk through this at some point. These are hydrostatic charts. This is the real-time physics of this ship, and it's showing us uh, the kinds of things that naval engineers look at to make sure that ships are stable, meaning that the forces that are pushing up and the forces that are pushing down uh, are in good balance so that when forces come from left and right and front to back, uh, we are not going to be in an unstable situation. So let's go and keep using the stable word by doing the stability test. So we're going out of the dry dock, which isn't quite the best imagery of this in real life. Usually the water is pumped up through here and then the door opens, but gives a good impression of how boats are safely lifted off their that off the um woo -hoo -hoo -hoo, that did not look great. That was a strong way from the stability test. But let's keep rolling. All right, so we are going to do the heavy seas operation. So we built a stable ship that just passed the stability test that can retrieve un autonomous underwater vehicles. We stayed under budget. Uh, we get we did we just barely got up to the minimum design displacement. That's probably what made that test such a oof, visual problem. And then we have the necessary equipment. We've got the AUV retrieval cargo. We got communications to go find these things. So we'll fix. We'll see what heavy seas really means. And then we also brought the necessary equipment. Uh, so let's let's run through our test first, though. So I'm hitting W right off the bat. I'm going up and clicking speed 2x. We'll notice two things. One, this isn't very hard for me to do. When we did the speed test with the um, combat practice ship, I was dancing all around, right? Uh, and for the beginning, I didn't even think about making time go twice as fast because it was uh, challenging enough to steer. But right now, I can have a nice sip of coffee. This thing is not going to be pushed too much by the waves, although the stability test showed us that we probably could use more water in the ballast tanks if we wanted to make this a, a, a even safer platform to be on. You know, we finished the mission, this test in a minute 10 seconds last time. So I think we're at a spot where we'll be kind of lucky if we don't double that. That said, uh, what do we we weighed fifty two thousand kilograms last time? We weigh a hundred thousand a million kilograms this time. So we're twenty times heavier and uh, twice as slow. It's the trade offs, right? Them's the brakes. So yeah, we went seventy seconds last time. We went a, a minute or one hundred forty five seconds this time. So just about double. Um, if this data is making you intrigued data discussion uh, there's some previous videos we did where we used some Google Sheets to track some data and if you want to get in on that and start really doing some real data collection using this simulator I know it's a video game but it really is a simulator uh, go run with it or shoot us an email fleet at navalengineers.org and we can definitely help you out alright so maneuverability course if this is your first time seeing it Green buoys on the left, red buoys on the right. Hit speed 2x to make this reasonable. I hit W right off the bat to max out the throttle. I don't need to button mash. I don't need to hold that down. I could if I really feel uh, we could adjust the speed as we go through this. But the best thing is just to max it out the whole time. Try to drive the same track every time. And that will ensure that uh, you get to, you know, you're able to have data that you can really compare. Uh, the end is right here, so the end is near, but would be a lot, uh, come a lot quicker if we were in our lighter boats, but that's the purpose of setting this up, right? So we just did two tests. We found out that this ship, it's not unreasonable by any means, um, and honestly, for this type of hull design, we're doing pretty well. That's not 
It doesn't feel bad to drive this. We're not going to hit 34 knots, but uh, we've done our tests. There's no more tests. So let us see why we need a, bill a million kilograms of ship. All right, so I'm going to hit speed 2x. The radar, the comms are giving me this information. If I would have brought better comms, I'd have a little bit more information. I'm turning left, though, because I want the, the radar signature to be directly above me. That means directly in front of me in the game. And so I got some information here, right? It's telling me to find these AUVs. They just surfaced. So we're working with AUVs that are under, <coughs> excuse me, underneath the um, surface. And we are recovering them with this ship. We have a trusty rescue boat here if we need to use a secondary craft to actually procure them. Uh, at something so like at we got we got time. Uh, this is four kil uh, kilometers from here to here. We got we got probably another two minutes to drive. Um, to actually retrieve these things, there may be like a crane or some kind of system that allows you to lash onto it. Uh, during the launch and recovery symposium that we'll talk about next week, there are specially designed systems for different types of crafts that are removed on and off. You can imagine for the aerial systems, it takes one kind of thing. It's a very stable platform and good line of sight. For the underwater and surface, you got to deal with these waves, right? And that's not easy. This this kind of sea condition, not for us, you know, going out on a Sunday boat ride, but ooh, this is something that the Navy and the Coast Guard, they need to anticipate and really have great plans worked out for. So you'll see that some uh, rescue boats are able to have some rear mounted access where they can just uh, drive up onto the rear of the ship and there's a part of the ship that uh, is able to be opened up by a gate so that the water is a little bit sloshing in the back and you can just drive up on there. There's also many crane type situations that uh, allow loops and different devices to be dropped over the side so that either the ship can move and put the uh, AUV or rescue boat or whatever into uh, the sling or the cradle or the ship could become stationary, which is most like you know what we do most, and then the the drone or the uh, rescue boat operator can can move into the sling, and then the sling can be hoisted up and moved onto the ship. So we are going to try and slow down so that our equipment, in a very good video game fashion, can be used. By our invisible deck hands to secure this drone. I slowed down f too early, but I'm going to slow down so I don't drive by it because we don't want to collide with it. But I'm putting engines. Oh, that wave kind of came right at the right time, completely stopped our momentum, and we retrieved AUV number three. We're going backwards. It thinks we should have got these two first. So these dots are to my left, so I am hitting A. I am steering left, and I'm going to steer left, and you can see my direction changing here. You can see the waves, the kind of the geography of what's around me changing until they're straight ahead. And now still got my throttle going forward, but we got another good chunk of driving to do. So, so far we've traveled two nautical miles probably have another one and some change to go. You might have noticed if you are really paint there it is. You can see them we use the highlighting around the outside um, so it's easier to see and there's the other one. Um, the, obviously the you know the Navy and the Coast Guard do not have access to <laughs> a invisible or you know, a fake throbbing uh, signature put around these things. You could use a visual cue, you know, depending on the level of s secrecy or the level of um, 
you know how you want to keep your drones uh, camouflaged in the naval environment. Uh, you may not want to put like a beacon light or something like this. You know, you may not want to put the blaring horn on top of this. But if we have radar or if we have some kind of comms that are communicating directly between these two, you can kind of see how my weight, my speed changes, right? Like occasionally I'll get on where I'm on the crest of a wave and I get up to 18, 19 and then the wave passes me by and I slow down again. But I'm going to have the opposite problem it looks like than last time. Although I think I might have slowed down again too. No, maybe not. Last time a wave stopped me. So I was able to really uh, slow down next to the drone. And that's not going to work. I need to slow down and bring this ship back. I'm going to turn around so I can backpedal. So that wave was pushing me forward. So even though I was in full reverse, I wasn't reversing. And I collided with my ship. Do not run into the ship with the rescue boat. Or do it again. Or do it again. This is not the best plan. Wow, I got the camera inside my boat. All right, so now I'm going negative 20. That doesn't sound like a good speed. Uh, so I need to... Oh, we got it. And we can only hold one. So I can't drive over to... Oh, disaster. I need to come back into the ship from a distance so that way I missed the button the first time. I got to got to re I got to recover after I launched this boat. Got to recover it back on. Turn, turn. I'm trying to turn it's just too old oh, and I can't I can't this boat my my ship is not set up to have any kind of sh ooh, running into it again. This score is going to be spectacularly low. All right, but this is also why we need um, such a heavy ship because this rescue boat is hard to steer. Woo! All right, so we retrieved the second one. Now I got to turn left a little bit keep going to get the final AUV. This is not world record time, but it is okay. And so you kind of saw this, the, you know, some of the missions like the combat practice, we set that budget tight. So like you really have to leave something behind that you really want. This mission isn't that. Uh, you can design, you can pretty much afford what you want. Um, but you've got to be able to um, execute the mission well. And it's really about how these heavy seas really change. Yeah, we did not even get close to it. Go moving too fast. So I need to go less than 10 knots. Oop. 10 knots. Oh, it's not, it's not having it. Got to go back. Eh, let's try it now. There we go. Got a little bit safer. So we are able to launch our boat. Uh, driving backwards is just not a good idea. But I'm, I'm looking, changing where the camera is. And now I don't want to go backwards 20 knots. That sounds insane. And so with this you know it says coast guard on the side but with this with this boat uh it really pays off not to go full speed that what you really want to do is drive at three quarters speed it keeps you under control i don't know where i'm going though I'm trying to find oh there we go but when i was going full speed things got pretty chaotic the other thing that you have to do just as like a video game player is really figure out these waves and that will ensure oops that we are getting a nice safe rescue here look at this that's how it's supposed to look you might see a clip of that on something later we won't look at the time right we'll just ignore that the time is atrocious 
But that was some smooth operator business. So I'm going to put my mouse over here because I want to immediately click and launch and recover. Four collisions. Seems a little low, but that's obviously four too many and probably I was dangerous another five or six times. That shouldn't have been like that. But I wasn't uh, driving well enough with the ship, so I put myself in a position where I had to use the rescue boat, which isn't a strength of my actual driving skill. Um, so I really should have engineered a little bit better or even just maybe thought more of as like focus while driving to really stop next to these drones um, with the large ship, which is able to handle these waves. Obviously, you know, with the rescue boat, you're able to, to not to get them in and out not too bad but uh, it takes time to get the boat in the water take the boat get it going the right way and then get the boat back on the ship after you picked up the AEV so those are the kind of things that you just need to oops I don't want to do that I want to do one last funny test and oh I hit logbook uh, I don't want to go to headquarters either I just want to go to the dry dock and put a silly comms on my uh my ship. All right, so we got to do two things. I'm gonna put on the some, another type of comms. Let's use Doppler radar. This, you know, you've heard Doppler radar, but actually, I'm gonna hit escape. I don't want to put on yet. I'm gonna move this ship to the front, and we'll put the Doppler right behind. Oops, the tower. So I'm going to add Doppler radar right against it. Hard to walk around. Eh, it doesn't look that bad. But just like we clicked here and we're, no, we don't want to continue. But I could have increased the length of the cargo hall. What I am going to do here is increase the height of the Doppler radar. So we're going to do this in three steps so now we can't even see this thing using the key up uh, maybe kind of camera angle uh, let's go to the stability test and see what happens if you remember the uh, ballast tanks are filled dangerously low we passed not proudly how about that uh, let's see what happens when we put this weight on the ship rough we failed water even came in on the the side of the ship we need so and what this means is that the height when we rotate when we uh, when the ship turns like this uh, in the water I guess tilts is a better term tilts is way too high and we need to make that change all right so what we should do is shorten the tower, right? The tower is ridiculously tall. It just doesn't even fit into the screen. But this is a simulator. So it's as if as in, as fun as it is to set a high score, it's also fun to see how things break. So let us max out all the weight we can put in the bottom. So for the youngest engineers, I always talk about this as like having a uh, hippo body on giraffe legs, right? The idea is that the weight is just too high and there's too much force that's being put on the side of the ship uh, below the water line to have, all right, so 107. So we got to go 1.107, 107 thousandths. Uh, all right, so let's max this out. Let's spread this weight. Actually, let's take the weight a little bit out of here. So we're going to take it down to 70 in the middle because we already have a ton of weight in the middle. Uh, let's take this down. Maybe we'll do 80. We'll make it even around. We'll go 80. 77, and the first one is 82. 
79. All right, let's see that's done. All right, so let's take a peek at this test. So the the waves, what, and that's what the stability test is doing. The waves are pushing below, but if, if there's something that's too, if the weight's too much up here, it's just as easy for it to fall over. That's why, you know, we got these big old noggins, but a lot of our weight is down below our waistline, so that way we as human beings are well balanced too. We clearly failed again, and honestly, I don't even think I could tell if there was a difference. But the thing I the the point I do want to make is that if you make the ship if you put as much ballast in as you can, you can actually keep all right, so let's go put in a little bit more water. You can see that we lost about 7,000 kilograms of just tower. Uh, so we're going to fill up these remaining tanks, I think. We can fill them all the way up. So these are the four that we took some out of. Oh, not quite. So let's go 90, 90. Nope. All right. Oh, yeah, we got to go 90. 90. 89 is close to 90. And we'll go down to 90. Okay, so now we're good. All right. So let's see if we pass the stability test this time. So we've got a shorter radar tower, but we put in a ton of weight in the bottom. You know, we have like this much room left in the ballast tanks. It's hard to tell. We passed. So if we, I'm going to do this first. So if we take this out, I'm not going to have time to run this through. But you can see that the radar is giving us a much more specific place to go. So I know exactly where to aim for with this type of radar tower. If I'm going to exit this mission, which will send me back to the dry docks. If I bring my weight back into the minimal allowed, kind of like what we started with with this mission. Boom. so many ballast tanks actually we might do a little talk on that soon too uh, there's some interesting new designs on these ballast tanks to make them more environmentally friendly so look at this this is how much you know I'm able to take some weight some significant weight out of the ballast tanks because the Doppler radar is so heavy we might actually be able to click on it and see the weight of the Doppler radar. All right, let's add a little bit more here. All right, let's see if it gives us a weight for the Doppler. Nope, missed it. Click up here. So it's giving me a range of 4,100 meters. So the range changes. Not that dramatically, though. Uh, oops. We are good. Let's go to advanced. Oh, I already have comms. Let's see. So the cost is expensive, right? It's three hundred forty thousand dollars, and the mass is twenty-five thousand kilograms, which is uh, you know multiple times more than the first radar tower that we used. That uh, just uh, put the radar right above our ship. But let's take this this example out now. So again, I kind of have packed all the weight in here. We've got a good long stern back here, but uh, I'm trying to keep the weight in the center. And we passed. Okay, so we didn't need all that weight. We just need to make sure that it's not that tall. So you can definitely check out these different comms if, you, if, if it may, seems like the thing to make your mission uh, AUV mission stronger 
But let's focus on this mission for the next seven days. You know, give it a shot. Keep on working on it. Uh, these heavy seas are definitely challenging to deal with. And uh, I think that you'll be able to find ways to master them both from an engineering the ship perspective and an engineering the solution perspective. If you have time, uh, 1 p.m., so in about three hours Eastern, or <laughs> three hours for everyone, but 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific, uh, join us again at fleetengineering.org, and we will do a little webinar on this mysterious shipwreck and how engineers can do some uh, true forensics to solve uh, some things that happen at sea. It's a pretty interesting talk. I hope you can join us. But I'm going to leave it here, and I will see you on Twitch next Fleet Friday. Uh, keep engineering and send us any questions you have, fleet at navalengineers.org.